Okay. Thank you so much to everyone who has stuck us stuck out with us right until the end. Um, or if you're watching this later and you've stuck it out to the end of an eight-hour recording, thank you to you too. Um, what I'll do before I um, give a bit of a wrap-up on the conference is to sincerely thank all of our sponsors one more time. As mentioned earlier, with their sponsorship, we're able to keep this conference free for absolutely anyone who wants to attend, regardless if they use Koha now, planning to use Koha, or are just interested in open source communities. So, um, without too much more, I'd just like to, um, one by one, thank every last sponsor on the board. So, first up, thank you to Bywater Solutions. A huge big thank you to Catalyst for allowing us also to um, be the organisers of this conference. Thank you to the Equinox Open Library Initiative. We really admire your work. And thank you very much, EBSCO, for your continued support. Thank you, Linux Australia, um, and for the work you do, which supports our communities. Thank you very much. And to PTFS, who've done a wonderful job of engaging remotely with the conference. Thank you so much. Thank you to FE Technologies, and look out for their workshop on Friday. And thank you to Internet NZ for seeing the importance of extending the values of freedom around libraries and software out to the wider picture. So thank you for including us in what you do. <laughs> Libre Tech, we see you over there. Thank you so much and thanks for watching the conference. <laughs> to the Library Bar, who we're going to um, go and give some custom to this evening. Flamingo, if anyone wants to get there really fast. <laughs> and lastly, to beat Nick Books, who um, helped us out with some gifts. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, one and all. Um, your contributions are just fantastic and so very appreciated. Okay. So three days. Um, I'm not sure if it feels like really fast or, or a really long time because there's so much crammed into a short space of time that it sort of disappears but sometimes when you're in the moment and um, maybe you forget the word you're trying to say, one moment can feel like a really long time. So um, firstly, uh, before I sort of summarise how the conference has gone, um, an enormous thank you needs to go out to every single person who prepared a presentation, whether they were here in person, uh, whether they um, did a live remote presentation or pre-recorded something for us, um, and especially to those of you who travelled. In particular, I'm thinking of our um, two keynote speakers on day one, Tukahu Rolleston and Anahira Moruhu. Um, Lee and Jacinta from Toyoho Mai came down and, um, and Debbie, who came up from Waitaki, thank you so much for travelling and thank you to every other um, presenter who, who made it here. So, let's see. Day one. We wanted to start the conference by giving everyone, regardless of whether they're in the room with us or tuning in remotely, something that they would never get anywhere else in the world. Um, our heartfelt thanks go to Takahu Rolleston for um, filling this room with so much spirit and energy and giving us something that we could never have dreamed he was actually going to, to bring. It, it blew us all away, and I think it will continue to blow people away as they watch it. So um, a huge, huge thank you to Takahu, um, who was followed by Anahira Moruhu, the, the, 
second keynote that day and our president of the Library and Information Association of New Zealand who again gave, I hope, a feel for some of the, um, some of the things that are special about being a librarian in New Zealand. Uh, in the middle section of day one, I'd sort of summarise that. I won't talk about every talk, but summarise that middle section as libraries doing awesome stuff. Like, it was just like, bang, bang, bang. Three awesome stories, three awesome people um, talking about what they've done. And then in the afternoon, um, we got some sort of more advice and um, technical help from three presenters, which I think we can um, take away and go and and exercise in our work. So that afternoon is a great one for if you want to learn something new or think of things in a different way and then go and, go and um, put those into your work. On day two, we had the very special uh, presentation from the 1999 Koha Project team. It was awesome to have Rosalie Blake and Rachel Hamilton Williams here in person along with Chris Cormack. Um, and I think they really stirred us with um, how special, um, or sort of how, how fragile the beginning is and how strong the projects become. And then um, gave us the challenge to then take the values of, of sharing and caring about our communities and putting that into the rest of the way we run our libraries, and in, in, in particular in regard to climate change and sustainability. Uh, following that, we had the Kohakon community video, which you can watch again and again, so I won't talk about that much now, but I hoped it warmed some hearts and minds around the world. Um, in the afternoon, we had a... The, oh, sorry, in the before lunch section on day two, we had a great run of um, sort of three very different um, presentations and kind of just like amazing the different things that that come out so it was cataloging plugins um with caroline which i think everyone was like yes great idea and then we had christina with stronger through integration and everyone just plowed in with loads of great ideas um that i hope we'll be revisiting and i think everyone really enjoyed that method of collaboration and then we had sharaf sal khan who um shared the study of perceptions of koha, which was just a bit mind-blowing and, and pretty interesting for a lot of us. Then um, after lunch, we had a couple more um, talks around um, ways of collaborating. And so we had um, Micah with the um, different roles within the library and how they collaborate, and then it's sort of taking that up a level, um, Ari Makaranta and Esapeka Kiskitalo came from Finland and talked to us about the Koha cooperation across Finland that they've been involved in, which was very cool. And um, and we followed that with um, some some um, marketing nows from um, Jesse and Adam. And then in the afternoon, um, I, it was like tips and tricks afternoon because we had um, working with Messy Data, and then we had um, all these Koha. Um, call her tricks from Janet McGowan, so I think those ones will be getting paused a lot and people will be putting those into practice. And that was yesterday, that feels like years ago. And then the last day to talk about is today. So um, things started to really come together today. This morning, um, and I'll take a little bit more time over day three because I didn't do a wrap up at the end of the day for just this day. Um, so we started with a very powerful keynote from um, Julia Serrano from Catalyst IT um, on web accessibility. And I think it's fair to say that um, everyone went away with a very long to-do list. And I think um, how seriously that talk was taken um, is a testament to the values that Koha libraries already have because we're already um, practicing in the use of Koha um, the values of of sharing um, and giving what we have and um, using what already exists rather than reinventing and keeping the barriers low. So we were all well ready to hear what Julius had to say and I think, um, yeah, we've all got a lot to do and I'm hoping to do some work on accessibility over the weekend during the Hatchfest. So a huge thank you um, again to Julius for what he brought today and um, for his words to us that were truly too kind 
um, about our willingness to, to absorb his talk and listen and put it into practice. Um, picking up again in Finland, Rebecca Pilipula, um, her title, World's Best Libraries, um, I just loved the playfulness and confidence of that. Um, and towards the end of her talk, um, she expressed that she hopes everyone can feel that their library is the very best library in the world. And I think that sentiment was just awesome. And um, she just showed such great leadership in the um, way that she's really gotten on board with Koha and is keen to see it succeed and trust the people around her to do a great job. Uh, following that, we had um, another talk to convince us and bring us confidence about moving to Koha if we um, haven't moved already, and that was from Jacinta, um, sorry, yeah, Jacinta Osman and Lee Rowe at Toyohumai Institute of Technology, and they talked to us about um, a framework for uh, for planning a project to help you make decisions and um, see the project run smoothly and make sure you have all the skills and um, vision and, and a few other aspects together in order to um, yeah to make good decisions through the project and help you stay on track with what's important. And they told a story about their implementation, um, which will be yeah, very compelling for anyone who's thinking about moving. So thank you so much. We always need those talks to, um, to answer the questions of um, potentially new koha libraries, and there's so much better coming from you all than coming from those of us delivering the services. Then we had morning tea and after that we heard from um, Ian Beardsley at Catalyst IT who talked to us about the Catalyst Academy and um, I'm really thrilled that Ian came and did that talk because the Koha community have known about the Catalyst Academy for years because every year we have a Koha project where um, high school students come in and they have a week of learning about um, different aspects of software development and running projects and then the following week they get to choose a project and put those things they learned into action and, and make some real change in an open source project. So it's something we're really proud of and I'm, and I'm glad that um, Ian came in to share a bit more about how, what the Academy is. Um, and yeah, some of you might remember um, that, yeah, Alicia, um, has, is now the person who has been running the Academy for the Koha project. So um, yeah, thanks also to Alicia for all the work she does there. We had um, a lovely um, lightning talk from Lizette Shear about the Koha US group and I uh, think uh, you need to watch it to see how much resources they've produced and it's great to see so many libraries collaborating um, without the need for consortium. So but still with an organisation where they can share information and um, work on developing as librarians and, and koha users. So it's very cool to hear what they're doing. Um, oh, but she was followed by um, Fred King and the Avenging Chicken, which, um, yeah, I think I said this morning, I couldn't, I was just amazed that such a pragmatic talk was so fun. And Fred, we just really enjoyed and giggled through your talk, um, as well as, Want to come, I had people saying that they've got to pass that to their IT department and ask why implementing Koha is so darn hard and can't they just do it tomorrow. So, job done. Good work. Thank you so much. Um, after lunch, we had um, David Nin give us a, a short introduction into Wikidata, and I think it really sparked some ideas. So, thank you, David, um, and I'm sure we're going to pick up some more on those on the workshop days, those ideas. And um, lastly... Before afternoon tea here, we had Kelly McElligot and Jessica Zyro from Bywater um, talking about education in their Monday Minutes. So if anyone hasn't um, looked up Monday Minutes, I'm sure they will. Um, so we had lots of lovely talks through the conference about something um, where some resources are available for us all to use, and we had people creating resources for us to use. We had people telling us about, um, asking us about marketing those resources, and then we also had people collecting and curating those resources. So um, a huge focus on education and documentation throughout the conference, I think, shows a strong and um, healthy project, and it's really awesome that we had such a lovely thread there. Um, also, with the, um, we had a few talks that just blew us away with some of the big projects out there, bigger consortiums and, um, or consortia, and... Um, projects that are in progress like um, Mingu Yakuzjo's talk 
about um, his next big thing in Turkey, which hopefully, another lovely thread that came through in the conference, hopefully the work they're doing in Turkey will allow some libraries who might be less funded or have, um, yeah, might not even have a trained librarian to still automate and, and use Koha going forward. So again, Fred's talk was a bit like that too. Um, how can, with a hundred bucks, how can you um, set up a library management system? And Fred did it, so we can all do it too. So I think we can take the spirit of those talks into the next few days. Um, on Friday we have the workshops here and um, we'll be sharing what resources we can with um, the online community but unfortunately most of them are quite hands on and, and face to face but we will share what we can. And then over the weekend um, we hope to have some opportunities to collaborate with um, people around the world and chat a bit about what we've learned this week. So um, thank you everyone. That is bringing us to the end of Kohakon conference proper, as we might say, for the first three days. Um, I do have a um, couple more notices for those of us in New Zealand, um, but before I say those, I just want to close the conference with a huge round of applause and thank everyone again for being here.